This is a demonstration of a four ring prefabricated illusory construct for an infected non union of tibia with an implant failure. In a prefabricated construct, we make a construct beforehand. The two half rings should be kept in the right way so that they are correctly aligned and are bolted to each other with ordinary bolts. Four such rings matching the diameter of the forearm to be used, leaving enough clearance all around are now assembled. The upper two rings will grasp the proximal forearm including ulna. The lower most ring will be a radio ulna ring whereas the last but ring will be a purely ulna ring to allow us to compress the fracture site. Thus, here we are fabricating a transport cum compression frame in four arms as it is a non weight bearing bone three th threaded rods spread at approximately 180 degrees are enough the proximal block and the distal block are now connected with threaded sockets. I have actually compared my forearm with the patient's forearm and found that as they were more or less of the same size and girth, I have decided to use my forearm as a template for making this prefabricated frame. In very slim or extremely obese patients, we can use the opposite normal limb to make the prefabricated frame. Once the frame is ready, it is autoclaved with the other instruments for surgery. The patient is operated under regional anesthesia. A nerve stimulator locates the right area of the axillary neurovascular bundle where the local anesthetic is injected. The patient is otherwise mildly serrated. A pre scrub is given to the forearm and during the actual scrub, <coughs> the arm is held <coughs> the arm is held beyond the elbow with the palm, hand and fingers free. The limb is clean and draped in the standard manner, we can appreciate the infected malunited ulna on this patient. The pre draping and preparation is in the standard manner and through a subcutaneous ulna incision the plate is identified, the screws are removed and the plate is extracted, the wound is closed in layers, the frame is now slid over the forearm and ensure that it is seating properly. The first wire is ulnoradial, one inch below the ulnar styloid 
transversely passing through both ulna and radius through their mid shafts along with the intraocular space the wire is passed slowly and advanced periodically one end of the wire is tightened and the opposite end is tensioned by twisting the nut by 90 degrees stretching the wire by winding it around its shaft this is called the russian method the wire ends are cut close and twisted right the second wire is on the most proximal ring once again it is an ulnar wire passing entirely through the body of ulna which can be felt as a triangle at this area once more one end of the wire is tightened while the opposite end is tensioned the edges are trimmed the next wire is now passed after ensuring that the frame stays central over the forearm with uniform gap on all sides the sequence is the same the wire is passed one end is tightened the opposite end is tensioned safe corridors in the forearm are not difficult if we know your anatomy then comes the first dorso volar wire passing through the putinus radius dorsally and extending in between the tendons on the volar side which are palpated by the finger we can now see that this area we have one radio ulnar wire and one radial wire at exact 90 degrees which gives the most precise balance and tension here in upper limbs we do not need more than 100 to 120 kg of tension for the wires second wire is a medio lateral ulnar wire again and once the most proximal and most distal rings are impaled with right angled wires we have to now move the forearm from full extension to flexion full supination to pronation to ensure that all movements are free this tells us that the wires so far have gone in precisely perfect corridors the wires in the middle two rings will come after the olive wire which will be used to buttress compress and bring together the loose fragments of the ulna which have been displaced because of the plater mode the olive is pulled on the opposite side the fracture is got into place and once again this olive wire is tensioned on the non olive wire olive side to pull it tight and get it in place and alignment we can see that a post has been used on this olive to allow traction the next wire is an ulno radial wire for from lateral to medial and this again passes 
through the shafts of both radius and ulna because of the distances between the wire and the nuts we may occasionally have to employ washers or pulleys to ensure that the wires are not unduly stretched the secret of a balanced frame is to have straight wires with no tension in the soft tissues badly positioned wires and wrongly pulled in the wrong direction will produce acutely painful frames on the contrary properly tensioned wires will produce a relatively painless frame and here we can see the reduction is almost near anatomic and compressed like an evo plate as the anesthesia recovers the patient has begun to move his fingers this is the immediate post operative that is within 24 hours of the surgery here he is the next day of the surgery it is performed on the day case and he was discharged on the same day this is him at one week of surgery within 3 weeks he has not only started moving his forearm fully and functional but has also begun to drive his bike bike i will keep you followed up on him and his progress thank you